Hi, this is a recorded drawing process and we are streaming it so it stays on a different tab on the channel, the live tab. Besides the normal live streams I try to make every week, this is just another way to make something uh, tailored uh, so I can explain a bit more about the whole process. You know, I, hopefully it's a helpful video. I started doing art while watching other artists and stuff, so uh, process videos like this were really helpful my journey so this is a way to you know help other people as well while we share a bit more of our creative process here so also sorry for the bad quality in the audio because my mic is not really good and i don't work with my voice so today's artwork is a drawing so it's a it's a line art drawing and the way i construct the scene is a bit different from a painting um, I have the sketch under the main line work layer and I start to refine every shape and detail using a solid brush. Most of the texturing on the creature and other objects will be made on the line art itself. That's why I keep making tiny details and lines that make things a bit more 3D. The cluster of details also helps to magnet our eyes because we tend to focus on detailed areas rather than plain or simple areas. At this point I'm also uh, thinking about the overall contrast. The focus should be on the creature eating the guy and uh, I can make it pop out by drawing a bunch of details on a particular region and I can also make things pop out by thinking on light and shadows or light and dark values. A couple of shadows are going to be 100% dark while others I'll make using a different technique. Uh, the sketch underneath the line art is pretty rough and loose. There's not much detail on it and it forces me to think about a more refined and finalized line work. Uh, but sometimes I need to visualize things a bit more and the sketch image is pretty, pretty detailed already. Not working with a developed sketch at first it's a great exercise for your creativity in terms of how you can improve the final line art similar to what i'm doing here i have a, a very simple sketch and then i'm uh, updating the whole image by thinking way more on the final line art rather than spending lots of time on planning a sketch in the end the result is almost the same but i think not having a precise sketch to work with is a bit more fun because you get to also improvise and you might also think of new things to add on the scene. The other side of this coin is you have everything perfectly planned and you know where everything is going to be so it's a matter of style and um, preference basically so if you're a more organized person you might think it's a way better idea to define everything before you start working on the line art. There's a cluster of objects in this artwork that also help to tell a story. Uh, it's a guy who died horribly near a trash can and bags. The wall behind him we have grungy textures and cracks. Also a few stickers and uh, a weird graffiti that is actually my signature. And then I, I keep adding more stuff on the ground, things that came in mind while I was focusing on that particular area, trying to make it more believable. Just added a few extra papers and general trash related objects, just trying to convey a dirty place. And this is a great tip for the traditional artists, because when you work with a marker or a permanent pen or something and you cannot erase your lines it forces you to think about your actions because there is no going back and you have to think about your lines and you have to yeah you know practice your finesse with a pen and all sorts of good stuff for traditional artists it's a limitation that can brings you awesome results when it comes to line art and creativity in general because part of it is basically freestyling so when you're limiting yourself you might also create a huge opportunity for your own creativity to flourish
In other words, you can find new ways to overcome a certain barrier. This particular artwork, most of it relies on a good line art because there's texturing, there's also some sort of three-dimensionality to it. And all of this I've learned how to do on a traditional paper sketchbook uh, using uh, pens and markers, things I cannot erase. And it helps tremendously. It's a great exercise. So yeah, there's also a secondary focus on, on the artwork, which is a, a mysterious creature roaming the streets in the distance. Uh, in the final artwork, it should look like a bit out of focus without that much contrast to drag your eyes, but it should be noticeable enough for you to just look at it at some point. <laughs> it's not a focus. It's a secondary thing and uh, it helps to bring some questions because this creature will appear later on the video. So it also brings a little bit more of storytelling to the whole scene. So at this point, I'm pretty much done with the line art and I started working on the values of things. It's basically a process of deciding what is bright and what is dark. And as I said earlier, uh, contrast can help you to tell a story. You can also drag your eyes to specific locations and if you're good enough with composition using lights and, and shadows, you can basically uh, force the way you look at something. And it's a really nice trick people learn uh, while studying photography and the old masters from old paintings. So this is important to aid the focus of the scene. After that, I started working on other details and also a bit of coloring. I played around with a couple tones and other stuff. Um, also added new shadows to the scene using another layer to have a bit more control. And coloring can be extremely difficult. But things get a bit easier when you set the light and dark values of the scene uh, before you start adding colors. Uh, the image is supposed to be sterile and lifeless. But not that much, so I added small amount of vivid colors here and there, like uh, the skin tone of the dead guy and the red eyes for the creature uh, and things like that. In the fun artwork, there are also uh, a couple hints of color on the stickers on the wall. But yeah, overall it's supposed to be a dark and a monochromatic scene. I keep playing back and forth on the color layers I'm using. Um, it's, it's a really fluid process for me. The only uh, structure I use is the underlying black and white values I mentioned. Besides that, I don't really follow that many rules. Um, my guidance would be purely contrast at first. Then I will think about colors, then I can change things. So I, I spend uh, quite some time to focusing on black and white, and then I jump to colors while also tweaking the values here and there. To, a, to the point I'm, you know, happy with the result. The whole artwork took about one and a half hour to make. Uh, and a, as a standalone illustration, I don't think it is that good. Because one hour and a half is, is a really small amount of progress to make. And ideally, I would work on it for a whole week. But since it's, it's one of many frames for a, a narrative video, I must learn to let go and overcome imperfections. So yeah, it was one and a half hour of extremely focused uh, work. That is unusual for me because I, I tend to spend way more time on personal paintings and refining things and stuff. So as I said earlier, for the purpose of making a video with many, many frames with handmade artworks, yeah, people don't really bother to have imperfect artworks to look at because we are going to have uh, sound design, music, narrations and other stuff to immerse you in a story. And at this point I'm pretty much done with the artwork but still I'm tweaking light and dark values and you can see that I'm painting uh, dark values on top of the artwork just to see if it looks better, just to see if the reading is the way I want it. So yeah, this is it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. This is my first time doing something like this, so it feels a bit weird and uh, not really uh, something I was planning on doing, but it just it just happened, you know. 
I might do a couple more videos like this with this sort of voiceover because I can explain a bit more what I'm thinking. If you guys enjoy, drop a comment, give us suggestions for other videos. Feel free to watch other videos we have on the channel if you haven't already. And uh, thank you.